everybody. Uh, my name is Chen, and I'm from Microsoft. Uh, so together with the other authors who work here, uh, we're actually from the, uh, a division that works on Windows Server business. And uh, um, uh, we're actually test guys that are trying to uh, test your products and make sure that the product works as uh, smoothly as possible before releasing to the customers. So in today's talk, I'm going to talk about this customer scenario focus testing and end-to-end -end testing approach we adopt in our team. So this particular approach is to address the problem of uh, focusing your test efforts in the late product cycles and make sure that uh, you're not only covered uh, the product function, uh, functionally, but also ensure that you deliver high quality user experience. So, uh, it's, this is how I start my talk. So we start is why we're spending effort on doing end-to-end -end testing that, that is um, focused on the customer scenarios, and then we'll walk through uh, our definition of custom scenarios. Uh, what do we mean by custom scenarios? What kind of aspect that are part of custom scenarios that we consider as important? And uh, then I'll present our model of custom, uh, customer scenario that will help us to guide the testing activities. And we'll present the uh, testing activities that are derived from the model. And eventually, we're going to show you our implementation of this uh, approach uh, to make it as efficient as possible and to cost as less as possible in the testing process. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, I conclude with some key takeaways about learnings we have from um, doing, uh, adopting this approach across different teams. So why are we doing this? <coughs> so we all know that the importance of testing. We do unit testing, we do uh, functional testing, we do integration testing, system testing, or even stress testing, just to ensure that our program is, uh, product is as bug free as possible. But is that all? So when you deliver a product to your customers, uh, they care more than just uh, functions. They also care about the experience of uh, the user experience of the products. Uh, for example, if you, your, your, your stuff works fine just in your test bed, but when you move to a customer environment, people deploy your products, and maybe something uh, that is really specific in their environment causing the stuff to fail on your product will not create bad experience, and you have to spend a lot of money post-release to fix those issues, and um, that's bad. So we're considering testing, especially in late cycle product testing, we have to uh, take a lot of uh, stuff into uh, account. For example, we have to cover like, what kind of setup that a customer has so that we ensure those uh, mainstream scenarios are open. And also, what kind of experience that user is, uh, is experienced with your product. For example, like how performant is your product? How reliable is your product? And, uh, um, and how manageable is your product? And if something bad happens, uh, what about the diagnosability of your product? So um, with all this uh, taking into consideration, and, um, and we know where we are with the quality, then we're able to, like before shipping, we can make a call better, this is the right time to ship the product, and when we ship it, we know that we're shipping a high quality product. So needless to say, this doesn't really invalidate, uh, invalidate the need for unit testing, functional testing, integration testing, or stress testing, because they are the necessary evil to get you through the initial development of the, uh, your product, but that's not end of story. So we position our scenario testing uh, on top of these tests that we're specifically targeting the stuff that are traditionally <laughs> neglect, uh, neglected in the other aspect of testing. For example, in the scenario testing, really focus now on the details of like how each function acts, but more on the end-to-end -end flow of like if the user is going to use the system this way, um, then we make sure that entire workflow is as smooth as possible. So in that regard, we care a lot about uh, things beyond the functionality, we care about the user experience a lot. But then it's easier to say than do because there's a lot of factors to consider uh, when you say a smooth experience. 
So then we need some sort of um, uh, specification that we can put together uh, uh, that defines our goal to ensure the smoothness of the user experience. Um, and we give that to the test team so that they know these are the goals that they should strive for when they're doing testing. And um, so that they don't lose focus and get buried in all kinds of different uh, testing requests. So what we consider in a customer scenario? Uh, besides the basic functionalities and uh, features, uh, for example, the customer environment is very important because we ship the product that customers are going to deploy in their environment and they use our product to ensure that uh, their business application and their business process powered by, their, by our product is uh, working. So that we have to ensure that our product is sitting on top of their environment of deployment like hardware software that works just as fine as uh, it is in our test environment in-house in testing environment. And also there are other parts of the scenarios uh, experience such as whether the feature is really usable, whether we have interfaces for the customer to really configure everything. Uh, for example, just using one single interface or, power, uh, or command line instead of going to each box to do the configurations. Uh, and also the health of the product is very important. By health, I mean a lot of aspect of the, uh, the product itself, such as reliability, availability of the product, as well as, say, the diagnosability. Like, um, you will ship product with gloves in it. When that happens, how easy that your product like, is to recover from the, uh, uh, the, the faults, and how easy is, uh, do you help your customer uh, with your, like, Diagnosability, uh, diagnose tools to identify where the, the, the problems and where the problem is and help them to recover best. So these are all part of the experience that we need to consider um, in the testing. So to capture all this together, um, 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 we find it's best efficient to come up with a certain um, uh, formalized format of. Uh, the models that represent um, these kind of goals that we want to uh, target during the testing. So this is uh, the scenario, the customer scenario model, or you should be, you could call that is a customer scenario specification. It's basically a, a, a generalized or abstraction of what experience we care about, and uh, what are the scenarios, or, uh, what are the deployments, for example, we're targeting. So inside this, you can see that. We describe the, uh, the use case of, of uh, the customers by dividing them into like who is the system and uh, what are their use cases and uh, what are the experience related use cases that we care about. So like personas and use cases are very similar to um, uh, the stuff you build uh, during the development time frame that you build you have there run, uh, you build the use case there run, that you have actors in there. Uh, but it goes beyond that to capture the experiences of those scenarios as well. For example, somebody is going to deploy a, um, a, file, a, a file server and ensure that the file server is, for example, has to be highly available, um, even like certain parts of, the, of their deployment fails. Apart from that, um, we take out some really important experience in um, um, indexes that convert that into something called SLA or service level agreement. This is a slightly overloaded term, but when we use here, we actually refer that to the specific set of metrics that we care about, uh, about the experience of the scenario. So um, an example of that would be if your product is the providing um, um, file hosting service for a database application then you ensure that when they place the database on, uh, on your file share, that the database is, keeping, uh, is, is continuous accessible, even uh, something really bad happened at that end. Um, and we also care about deployment, because deployment is where, uh, where, that, uh, where we see as a gap between our test bed as, cost, uh, as, uh, as opposed to customer environment. Um, your product may work perfectly fine in your test setup because you didn't consider this or that kind of hardware combination, for example, or software that you use on top of, on top of your offering. So 
if you take that into consideration, then you get a whole set of like uh, um, deployment, uh, uh, typical de uh, deployment setups you need to test before uh, you ship your product. So to put everything into perspective, uh, our customer scenario model is basically a specification of a, a typical use of your product that break down into multiple, uh, um, should I say, goals that you, you're targeting in your testing. For example, we know that we have covered every kind of scenario for certain kind of actors um, that are using the system, and we have certain experience matrix to capture with our SLA rules, and we, we know that we have certain all, um, type of deployment we want to cover with our testing. But even with this model, uh, this is not really strictly uh, uh, straightforward testable. Uh, you give, if you give this to the test team, then you will need something that uh, to gap between the, the actual testing that covers this scenario versus the, the, the abstract goal set in the uh, scenario model. So we derive something called uh, a test model um, from the, uh, the, the customer scenario model that actually is, um, is a set of a specification that is really actionable by the test team. So you can see that what he does is uh, roughly uh, map back to the, uh, uh, the scenario model or the business side of understanding of the customer uh, use cases. So uh, we have actions in there that roughly correspond to the breakdown of the use cases that uh, uh, how the user uses the system. For example, um, in a, um, in, if, if your product is an office in web portal, uh, then the action is probably accessing the, uh, that web portal uh, with a certain like, um, uh, user request. Um, the other part of that is, is the fault. So by fault here, it means that uh, uh, the incident that can, have, can, be, uh, can happen due to uh, the software configuration, so all the hardware configurations. So these kind of uh, fault um, tests are actually derived from the deployment information we have with the customer scenario model. So if, for example, your product applies to uh, 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 like clustering scenario, that means your, your, your product is done through multiple machines, then there are connections between those machines. There are private network connections, there are public network connections between machines and you have to have some sort of um, storage backend that's shared by those machines. So these are all failure points that, uh, that can happen when you actually use the software. So when we're, when we're doing the testing, in the functional testing, you probably don't test, uh, test like you just uh, plug a node or something like that. But in the scenario, <coughs> these are the stuff you need to consider when you're doing testing. So, so the faults are actually derived from um, those kind of setups and make sure that you cover um, and uh, the other part was SLA tests. The SLA tests are the test uh, are the test activities are specifically targeting the uh, the matrix we care about the scenario. For example, uh, these matrix are usually related to the user experience. For example, when you have um, uh, um, say uh, a cluster that hosting a service on that, on that, and when that one cluster is, um, for example, rebooted for some kind of reason, such as like memory corruption in RAM and cause the kernel to just melt down. In that case, the service has to like um, fail over to the other side. And for the customer, they should not feel anything because the, uh, they should not actually perceive any interruption in the service. So the SLA metrics we can define for this kind of thing is that you have a probe uh, service, make sure that uh, the request goes in and you don't have a delay beyond, say, five seconds. So your service has to fail over within that five seconds. Otherwise, uh, maybe the, the customer application will crash if it doesn't meet that uh, deadline. So, um, and all of these test cases, test actions, um, as I uh, are grouped into something we call action groups. So the actions are more kind of uh, modular steps that are part of the end-to-end -end workflow that the customer uses. So the reason we do that was we were trying to make sure that actions are really highly reusable test cases 
that can be used in many different uh, testing scenarios. So the action proofs actually is the logic connection to ensure these uh, test cases uh, uh, these test cases are composed in a way that is making sense. For example, uh, we have the uh, we'll see actually see example later. Um, um, for example, if you have a file server um, that you want to back it up, so the first thing you will probably do is back it up the node, and, uh, and then later you will have test action to verify that your backup is really, really uh, um, uh, consistent and not um, have any data corruption in it. Uh, the other side of the test scenario is uh, once you know what test you want to run, you also uh, need to make sure that you're running the test on the right hardware. So, uh, on hardware and software. Uh, so that in our test scenarios, we also um, clearly uh, uh, defines uh, what kind of topology uh, that we want, test, uh, we want to run our test on. Um, for example, like um, um, take a file server, for example. It can be deployed by small business, which maybe they only have like one server standing on the server. They don't need, uh, need to be like highly available. They just want to make sure that stuff gets back up from time to time. But then medium sized um, uh, company or large company, you probably want something that's really accessible across the, uh, not only across the, uh, the offices, but also across the, the regions that your data is replicating between the, uh, these different uh, geological regions. So in that, kind of, uh, in that kind of situation, you really want to test the same features over different, uh, different types of topology. Uh, and in your test lab, for example, you can simulate uh, the slow link between uh, the two machines to make sure that it looks like two machines that are sitting on different uh, geological regions. So um, now I give an example of what, it does look, uh, what a test uh, model looks like. So the, the models, uh, like uh, in the test schema, you have a, a, a series of actions that can be composed together. So in this example, we discussed that uh, uh, this is actually about a feature that uh, is enabled, uh, is, is a fair share feature that enables you can host the uh, uh, virtual machines on that. Basically, placing the virtual machine files on top of the file shares. So then in that case, uh, one scenario, uh, one actor in this scenario is probably the administrator. So the administrator wants to ensure that the backups for your virtual machines are happening uh, at a regular interval and, uh, and no matter what happens in the system, the backup can go through. So in that case, your actions um, in the test schema will be like backing up VM, but also you introduce bugs in this process, such as you crash one of the node hosting, the, uh, hosting the, uh, your virtual machine's uh, file share service. So in that case, the, the failover happens, your backup continues, and everything works just fine. And uh, we run this test uh, scenario on top of uh, on different types of topologies. For example, for small businesses, you probably want to do a file server cluster with only two nodes, and a server cluster with two nodes, and you have like fairly cheap uh, 20 uh, hertz uh, network connection between the, these nodes. And uh, at the back end, you have some sort of a, a bunch of like a dust instead of like really expensive um, uh, RAID uh, controllers to power uh, as your storage. Uh, when these all put together, uh, and uh, uh, that forms our test scenario to make sure that across each milestone we run this test on this time, uh, this topology combination. So the one question you probably wonder is like doing this is, sounds like uh, good, but it's really expensive. Uh, yes, it's not cheap, but uh, then you can go as far as, as much as you can do in the automation to make sure that everything uh, um, and you bring down the cost of running really, really different type of scenarios. So we build a system that consists of like four stages. Um, we have a setup automation tools that consumes the uh, the test uh, the deployment part of the test model that can just provision machines from labs and to automatically set up machines to um, for running the test on. And we have scheduler that is consumes the test schemas and make sure that test cases get executed on different machines and they're executing uh, at a, in a way that looks like, uh, that really resembles how the customer uses your stuff. For example, uh, somebody is, uh, is using uh, the VM you're hosting 
to do um, like uh, some work, like your IT uh, workers, maybe they're doing um, PowerPoint uh, slides on that virtual machine. On the other hand, the, uh, uh, the backup guy who comes in and back your VM, or if he sees significant load on certain machines, they want to move resources over. So all these things happen in parallel. So the scheduler is built into this place, make sure that these events are um, colliding uh, in a sense that, uh, that, that is resembling the, the real world scenarios. So that makes sure that we're testing the right thing. And, um, but all executing test is only part of the, <coughs> part of the story. The scheduling, I will cover this. So, so um, the testing is only one part of the story because executed test, and you don't really know, uh, the test is it's passed or failed, and you don't really know what's really going on with the system. So we have built up a com very comprehensive monitoring and reporting infrastru infrastructure to pull the metrics and the results from the uh, test setup that, uh, that you're in testing error on. For example, we have the probes in there to monitor the system health and monitor the counters on the machine. So sometimes your test just pass, but actually maybe on the other machine that, uh, that is a part of your scenario, maybe that is consuming really high uh, CPU power because some, uh, some software code, uh, some code in there was not doing the right thing. So all this happens if you don't monitor, you don't collect this data, you don't visualize this data, then you wouldn't know uh, something really bad ha uh, happens uh, that could degrade your uh, user experience. So, so we collect all this data together and we actually uh, render all this data on a single timeline. So you can see that when you run this scenario, you see exactly what my user experience are uh, across the uh, different part of when you run the scenario. And, uh, uh, and, and also we have analy uh, 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 analyzing logic built in to make sure that uh, uh, all the SLA rules are meet, uh, met. For example, when we're doing failover across the, the testing, we make sure that failover resources always happen within that, say, five seconds and never, never go beyond that. If you go beyond that and you have the uh, rich set of data for, for your test, for your dev to dig in and find out what's wrong with the, uh, the execution. So yeah, this is about <coughs> this is actually um, the approach we took uh, with releasing the Windows uh, uh, server uh, file servers. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, the, the key takeaways from this process is that you really need a, 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 a good process first to define what really you want to test, and you set a clear goal to your test team, uh, and you have a, a really really good tracking system on uh, what exactly are the scenarios you care about. So when you map that in your test scenarios, the test scenarios uh, runs across milestones and provides you with the data point um, that you can track centrally um, uh, using the same uh, 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 model format so that you know that uh, where you are standing with shipping this feature. And also, um, we found it's very important to, that when you collect the data from all these testing, uh, uh, testing activities, uh, you must have a way to really consume the data easily uh, by your, your by your dev developers and test. So uh, the way we do that is we collect, uh, we quantify as much uh, uh, metrics as possible, and we make sure that these metrics can be uh, combined together uh, so that it makes sense uh, uh, for the guys doing the analysis. And also, uh, there are some next the best practice to reduce the cost of uh, implementing this approach, such as yeah. we build the test model in a way that uh, each test case is, is kind of doing an independent thing and it's uh, highly reusable across different scenarios. For example, you want to test action to reboot machine, you don't want to write each time in different tests. But instead of that, you construct a, a single robust like tools doing this and you can post that into your test scenarios. And, uh, and also you want to couple the top, uh, test topology with your test cases so that you can easily run the test cases on across different type of uh, test topologies to ensure you have uh, the coverage of all different uh, type of your customer. <coughs> That's all for my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for the very informative presentation. I have a question about the controller diagram that you have this scenario XML, which is the input to the mm -hmm. test partners. 
scenario XML and a configuration XML? Yes. Yes. So the scenario XML is something. Uh, who's generating the scenario? XML? Okay. Because so the that is that is the source of the entire story. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. And that's the key thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question is, um, who actually generates the scenario XML? So the scenario. Um, uh, so the test team usually work with, for example, program managers uh, because they have better understanding of their customers. So the program manager sat down and, um, and uh, give the uh, what kind of scenario you want to cover, make sure that we cover in the releasing uh, in a way that uh, negotiate between the testers. And we have tools to help testers construct these scenario XMLs from the specification uh, from the um, program managers. The, uh, the reason I'm asking this question is because we face this problem a lot of times where we find that the product that we support mm -hmm. tends to have these faults specifically in customer scenarios but not in our local test beds. Mm -hmm. right? That's because the customer environment seems to run something like a database with thousands of processes running at one shot on a single partition along with our product for example and mm -hmm. that is where it shows up that condition. Right? Mm -hmm. So. We, but however, we don't, the kind of information we can gather from the customer is, he says, okay, I was running this thousand odd processes, but then it is not the full picture. Mm -hmm. If you really say the scenario where, it, where it's going to crash, that full picture is not there with us, right? So for us, it is more like we are challenged into how do we get to talk to the customer in understanding the exact scenario where it crashed. Mm -hmm. Because the information he gives is very limited. Mm -hmm. He will probably tell you, okay, I was running this database server, mm -hmm. I was running this application, and mm -hmm. your application, mm -hmm. and it crashed. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't tell us anything. Yes, yes, that, that is actually a problem. I'm not saying there's a shortcut to that. Um, you do need to spend time with your customers, and we actually, uh, for coming out of these scenarios, I think it involves a lot of like marketing research, talk with customers, sit with customers, and also you have the whole legacy of your previous releases, and issues reported by the customer that serves as your your your, your knowledge base to construct uh, to, to, to come up with scenarios. But uh, for the other problems, and you mentioned that um, they're running um, like uh, the state based program plus they're running this application, the other thing. That's why we're trying to like um, first figure out what the customer does. Um, we know that they do this. We know that they do that. Then how about in our scenario, just bring them together. And, and put them together, just let them run and see where we're getting with all the stuff putting together, are we finding issues or not. So it, it, it is involves some sort of guesswork, but then you have the data to back up you, um, which you do need to spend time on, like I said. Talk with your customers and um, doing the, the due diligence, doing the, the research, what they're doing. Do you have a sample scenario XML on how you actually convert the input data into the XML? Do you have any kind of examples for that? I don't have that today, uh, but um, but in general, it's 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 uh, the XML itself is uh, rather high level. Uh, the, the the rich logic is actually contained in the actions that are building from that. So the XML basically tell what to execute, as opposed to how they can be executed. Um, so the test and action itself contains the, the really is where the, the, the juices are that you put in like, um, for example, some actions really simulating the database load. So that's where it is. Okay, one more quick question, please. Okay. Um, so good presentation and my understanding of the whole thing is it's really preventive, right? So mm -hmm. you are envisioning customer scenarios and you're creating your test bed in such a way that you can prevent customer issues, right? Mm -hmm. But from my experience, always you will have customer issues and then we go ahead and solve it. So when your customer reports issue on a release, how do you convert them into test cases? Do you have a process for that? Oh, okay. I think that's, our, that's a separate topic. Yeah. But to answer your question, yes, we do. We do have a like, customer response team when something goes bad um, that we actually like uh, started to look at what's going on, what's wrong, and we actually put all these feedbacks into, uh, into a feedback loop to, to, to make sure that next time when we're doing testing, we don't miss that. Okay. Um, so, uh, but it, part of this, we're really focused on, um, because doing that uh, when, we're, when the bugs are already reaching the customer, 
it already becomes very exclusive to this. So it's still cheaper to fix that before it goes out. So but the takeaway from that is if we at least create test cases for the future releases from those experiences, there's a lot of value. Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much again. So speaking. Uh,